So we had a year end episode uh, of the new version of Uru Labs with you on and uh, this is the first time we are gathering in the new year. Uh, mm-hmm. So what's going on? What are we doing? No, we are just uh, going to continue with our uh, idea of having a conversation on uh, how do we break things down into simpler conversation to have to reach more audience mm. in Bangalore. So that's the reason why we are here. Mm. And uh, yeah, I think we'll just take it on. So, again, so there have been a lot of conversations that I've been having with people. And I found that it is important that we move beyond the superficial, right? So, I bring on people who can provide more uh, interesting angles to uh, the topics. And uh, there, there, there are opinions and there are facts and there are figures and there are numbers. And there are people who can bring a little more depth into these kind of conversations. So that's what I've been attempting to do. But I don't know if that is something that is valuable to people. Do they have the time and wherewithal and attention to pay to get more uh, information on these topics so that they can make informed decisions? So what is the value of information for people? And I think that's something that I wanted to kind of think about. What do you think is the value of information? You've been in the space of getting people to participate, getting people to engage in different ways. You guys have been trying to do the creative way of involving people, right? Information dissemination in very simple ways, in you know, engaging ways. What we have been trying to do is to design communication for, um, you know, uh, campaigns for. Uh, projects for the gov- with the government or with civic agencies and things like that but uh, our exposure has been more to towards with with the public mm. general public mm. right so we try to get partnerships and collaborations and uh, generally try to raise the awareness of that particular campaign by ground activation by on ground activation by connecting with a lot of people on the ground so often what happens is when we speak to people let's say for decongesting Bangalore, mm. right? And people say, uh, you know, why why should I be interested in this? Because it's the government's job to add more roads for us to move more freely. It's the government job, government's job to have better traffic management system, have police more effective, traffic police more, be more effective. But those are all I feel, I mean, most 80-90% of the time, I feel that, you know, it's a very basic level of understanding that they've had based on which they are making a random choice or a decision. So sometimes it becomes very difficult for us to get across to make them understand why they should support this campaign and why public involvement would result in a government action that would benefit everybody. Mm. So in that context, let's, we are going to discuss today about the importance of information and the importance of um, gathering knowledge not just at the superficial level, but how do you, why is it important to have that kind of knowledge and why is it, what are you going to do with it and how is it, how is it going to help the society at large in solving problems for the city? There's all sorts of information around it, right? You just have to go after some information based on the interest that you have. How do you, how do you break down information? Good question. But I think it's also useful to know what's the difference between information and knowledge. At some point, I am trying to always say that information can be given, news is information, it just hits you and you process that. But knowledge is slightly more deeper, I feel. Mm. It's expensive to get in the sense you have to spend time and effort and seek out the right sets of people who are giving you that information. What is knowledge? I don't know. Is it a public good? That's one thing I wanted to also understand. Is, is, Is knowledge something that needs to be easily available? Because today, podcasts, newspapers, online, uh, like MIT has opened up their entire courseware, um, massively open coursewares. People are able to get this far more easily than they used to earlier, right? But that also means there's a lot. Internet has democratized the whole thing. But if knowledge is a public good, which should be accessible, it has so far been closed by certain people for fee, right? You had to attend a college to get science knowledge. It's not that the knowledge was not available, but it was not given to you and delivered to you in in a way that is easily consumable. 
So you structured a course around it and they gave it to you and said you pay for it. But as we consume more and more paid information or the information that we have or the knowledge that we have through experience or the knowledge that the people up here on the podcast have through experience, they're giving it to you for free on these kind of things, right? So it constitutes the internet and the video and, and all of these things have democratized the way you gather information for free, which earlier used to be paid or through closed groups. So it typically, while basic knowledge is a public good, it is not easily available or accessible and it was kept uh, in, in a certain way. But not to belabor that, uh, the point is, if knowledge is available to you, how do you consume that and how do you break it down, right? That's what you're saying. But I, I just want to just take a step back because mm. you said knowledge. Knowledge is, I think, a, a lot more refined information, maybe deeper understanding of a particular subject, right? We're talking about general cases here, like, you know, you want to understand why uh, a certain campaign is being done by the city mm. like uh, pedestrianization program mm. uh, you know many people didn't even know what pedestrianization was what is pedestrianization that information was not there but when people kind of understood from others you know that closing down a street in order to make people to move freely inside without vehicles uh, a lot of people didn't understand what good is it going to bring to them mm. right that was an information that they had at a very very superficial level and therefore there was a lot of resistance for it what should they do what should anybody do in order to understand a little bit more uh in order to understand in order to support or even you know allow the city to have such campaigns that will uh be for the collective good you know it will translate into a collective good right so right. it's at a much basic level that I'm talking about. So the, the way Urulabs has been trying to break this up is last year in season one, we've had a lot of people who've done a lot of things, right? In their own way, they were trying to explain what they have done. Obviously, the issues span multiple uh, things that they have done over many things, right? This season, what we're trying to do is take a specific topic and start un uh, underlying why is that a problem? We have to first understand is that a problem or is that a good thing or is that something is it is it something that is even worth diving deep into is the stage that we need to set once you set that there you need to know more why you need to know more is there any other intricacies behind the problem is there any intricacies behind the problem that is not allowing it to be solved as easily as you think it needs to be solved hmm. right we constantly deal with traffic or waste or uh, water or uh, pollution and all of these kind of problems in the city, the quality of life itself, is that you find this is a solution very simple based on where you're sitting, mm -hmm. right? So you sit in a vehicle or a car or something like that, you find what is the problem to you comes from where you are experiencing it, the frame of reference that you put around it and the bias that you carry around it. In order to break that bias, you need to start understanding what are the other perspective, what are the other contestations that are there in that space right i do cycling promotion often but i come at it from saying that this bicycle and this and that frame of reference is what i use to think about problems that are affecting the same goes for somebody else in another vehicle same goes for the complexity of that is what we need to break down right who are all the people who are impacted by anything that you're doing and how do you solve those problems also in order for you to get what you need and in order for the others not to be negatively impacted by what you're doing. And there is a cost to the, to the negative impact. How hard is it pinching you? Right? Let's take a typical example of a, you're sitting in a motor vehicle and you say there is not enough space. Right? Is the space that is being given to you more than what is allowable? within the impact of the cost that has been put into the infrastructure. Let's say this is the amount of road and this is being spent and destruction of that and widening that could impact other costs that you are not, for you it doesn't matter what the cost is, but for the person who's bearing the cost, it matters, right? You're knocking off some other things in order for you to get it. Now, if you're taking the space away from something else, I need a bicycle lane or walking space. It has to be taken from those who already have access to certain things. So you don't break a building and destroy a business in order to get those two things. You instead encroach upon the vehicular space. Why? Because those are the less inefficient modes and you could probably do with more efficient mode. So the cost benefit trade-offs that we do in that space is very important to understand. So defining the problem, why it is a problem, 
setting the stage that there are complexities behind which you may know but you don't probably see it at that point in time right it is something that you won't notice so bringing that uh, complexity is something that we need to do and then jump into the trade offs if you did this what would happen if you didn't do this what are the consequences it could be intended it could be unintended you wouldn't want something bad to happen but you don't see it so we're trying to lay that base so this is how we dive into creating information that gives you more depth in what you need to understand and if you pay the attention and time to gather that and understand what else could happen you always have to question why it is not happening then you start understanding there are other things what are these other things and there are many other things which we may not even be able to grasp but each one has a cost to it so what is the cost to benefit cost not just in terms of money it's also in terms of other people's livelihoods it also in terms of other people's sacrifices that they have to make for you or something like that. so that's how i think uru labs have been trying to you know put the in the whole podcast that we've been trying to do is to come at it from a more holistic angle what i actually wanted to ask first how do you not fall into a confirmation bias because all everybody has some bias right uh, and when we read something that's a topical uh, stuff that's there in the media that's trending right now we try we try to jump into conclusion with just reading one article about that and depending on where our ideologies fall we kind of uh, start scoring more information pertaining to that particular ideology now how do we how do we not fall into the trap of uh, confirmation bias so that is a natural course of how we acquire information is we will all have our own biases but the point that you are making is how do you get out of it uh, is to first of all try and uh, do something what we call as the uh, it's technical term which is called null hypothesis what you do is you do the opposite of what you mm. believe in mm. right you just do the completely opposite of what you believe in and say is this is also possible mm. right and you try to disprove that but if you don't want to get too technical what you do is you you always have to have the urge to verify what you believe in by listening to an opposite viewpoint just to listen you don't have to be swayed by that you may be angry by that sure. but it is useful to just switch on mm-hmm. so if you're extremely right wing switch on some very liberal people work people and listen to them mm-hmm. if you are a very liberal person listen to the other person you may not change your opinion but what ends up happening is there is a updation of your prior information that you have already gathered that is something that you have to strive internally to mm-hmm. get and that is how you kind of get above your own confirmation bias we all preach to the choir we all have our immediate set of people who we use as a leverage to do our campaigns but while we push and that is an important part of uh, in any negotiation process is you have your own bias and you represent that bias it's important to represent that bias mm. but don't expect that everything you say will be done the way it needs to be done by somebody who's listening to two sides of the story mm. typically that would be government and other decision makers who own the responsibility or have the uh, responsibility of making that determination need to hear more sides of the story than yours mm. but it is also possible that the decision makers have their own bias and that's a part of your old public choice theory is that they also have their own human beings and they have their own biases as well they listen to their coterie of people who sit next to them and we've all seen that mm. and they want to listen to them and say it's easy for me to do this because i trust them and i'll just do what they say it's easier for me to get by mm. the rest of them are just trouble makers and it's harder to negotiate so whenever somebody comes in when you go into with your bias be willing to sit down and negotiate that down so that doesn't doesn't that risk us getting into a kind of a group think like you know what happens is when you go into a, a let's say we are we're discussing a, not not necessarily right wing left wing ideology but uh, you know if it's a city issue mm. and we as citizen groups in a particular area have identified a certain problem and we know how to resolve that problem in our own way based on the research that we have done based on the consultation with various stakeholders in that area and then we have like a working plan and we go present this plan in in a government department uh, which is connected to that particular problem but there like you said they have their own confirmation bias they have their own stuff and most often what happens is in order for us to get our work done we kind of agree to a lot of things that we originally wouldn't have 
so who wins in that kind of situation like in the sense like okay maybe you wanted a full foot footpath but you got half a footpath yeah that's not entirely the solution but last time you said you know that's we at least got that so is that a success or a failure i think it is a success see that's the problem you want to win public infrastructure with benefits a lot of commons is not about to win mm. it's about moving forward it's about progress and what is progress who defends progress it's this collective route we talked about active citizens we will come back to it in a different thing we are talking about information today in order for you to collect information and use that to make this determination one of the first thing is updating of your prior information when you sit across the table and many people say that and then agreeing on a common outcome why are we wanting a footpath who benefits from that footpath opposed to who loses from that footpath hmm. everybody should be known and you just have to make the cost that it is worth getting some people to walk there even if it means i will drive a little slower on that road hmm. and those parameters are driven there is x amount of space and that needs to be divided you cannot always go on expanding the cost of expanding is putting some other people out of business how do you accommodate everything and move forward the point is not to win the point is to be able to say among the contestations is what we have better hmm. that's on the action side but if you if you step back and say we, we, probably we can discuss taking some example that the, yeah so we can we can probably take some examples and go into the actual negotiation process and see how it benefits who benefits and all of those things it's quite complex and not everybody gets involved in it as a citizen when you want to understand why something happened don't look for a win look for a progress hmm. towards what you want to happen incrementally in some way or the other there will be compromises you just understand if you compromise for something who else got some other benefit is that is the cost of giving that up who are the people who were not benefited from it and how are they affected is it affecting their livelihood to live in the city ultimately it's about just a bunch of people hmm. when you campaign for something and i campaign for something we both are the citizens who live in the same place why do you want what you want why do i want what i want and how does this affect everybody else who are sitting in the same place and who are using the same facilities mm. does it make progress towards something good how do we bring that out mm. but again the information that i want people to have is in order for you to make these choices and understand this the depth of information you need to gather is little more time consuming it may take away some time from your netflix movie some day sure are you willing to give that up are you willing to give away 1 hour of entertainment to listen to somebody else are you willing to give 2 3 hours of information to listen to 3 4 people hmm. in a week and what are those choices and what does it get you have you got more knowledge of the problem in the end it may not have solved the problem but you got two or three pieces of information or even one piece of information from the thing that you gathered the next thing is how are you going to use that information how are you going to apply that information to some other problem you see around you and i have been able to successfully talk to people even in my own bicycle campaign we talk about bicycle lanes were the only thing that were talked about as the most safe answer it is it is an answer it is an answer to probably 20% of bengaluru street what about the rest 80% is the same thing with traffic right it, it's always about you need to start understanding what is progress and i want to make an attempt to look at the systemic problems that you will not have information to so every populist choice that you will you know go and say yes this is the answer you need to think back step back and see what are the other things involved you may not publicly acknowledge it but internally start understanding more mm. and i think that is what i think people should do more of it's not just this podcast there are many others right yeah hunt them down listen to them and look come get as much information as possible whichever angle they come from and whatever bias they come from mm. i think that's a useful way to start your journey towards information gathering and that i think is useful to now who is giving that information how are they giving that if, if th- these things are coming for free you don't you don't get to pay yeah. for these things it's not easy for you to access these people and sit with them for an hour mm. and listen to them about how they have done this if you want to waste it it's up to you so that that's the uh, point i mean i was just trying to say in in a community let's say there's all kinds of people that are that come forward in order to support a certain a common good that they want from the government which they want to action out right 
so there are differing views from the group that goes into these meetings itself like what meetings are that, that might happen in my ward uh, we might all want the same thing hmm. but each one will have probably opposing yeah. views and that kind of plays into the hands of the bureaucracy or politicians or whoever else it is in order to buy more time and probably uh, create a, a different outcome hmm. that may not be helpful to most of the people that have gone there in the first place so how what is that cohesive mechanism that a group should need in order to uh, you know make that representation felt with the government office or the government department in order to get some stuff done for them because we don't follow a process of getting everybody on the same page regards to the problems we are trying to solve there is no prep work that happens you take a standard problem there are a lot of parking violations in my area we need to fix that and you just go and lay the problem out on the table and everybody comes with their own opinions mm. have you written the problem down have you understood it's it's a little bit of work some volunteer needs to do it somebody who understands some things and this is where decentralization needs a lot of effort when you go to a ward level right the kind of support that the mps get in the parliament with so many people around them doing policy analysis which policy does what what are the rules what are the regulations how do you mm. think about that is not available at the local level the local citizens level. are going directly in and sitting there is no policy wonk there sitting and telling you oh these are the p- p- parking rules this is how the the parking policy is this is what needs to be done. nobody knows anything mm. you are not writing a document no rigor to read a document which says these are the parking policies that are there has anybody read that before they come in or is anybody there before tabling the problem doing homework and going there and saying a parking issue that was discussed in the last ward meeting needs to be understood and analyzed what are the implications of parking what are the policies that are already there somebody might know it maybe the corporator or somebody who who is sitting in now because we don't have the local government the mla or somebody is sitting there some ward representative they may know but they will not tell you there's an information asymmetry they use that Mm. that you don't know that to their own advantage so it's important for you to know the subject well if you you are yourself don't have the time you need to ask someone to say can someone who is interested and in know this prep a document mm. with the problem statement with what are the policies that are there what are the violations how is it being enforced not being enforced how do you fix the problem and are they in line with the existing policies if it doesn't exist can you make a new one and make that representation somewhere else or does it need some other kind of challenge does it need judicial kind of a challenge does it need an instruction or a government order of some kind or is it already a solved problem which is not implemented here because somebody is just taking us for granted mm. how does this work who are the other people who are influencing this not to happen mm. right and the unintended consequences of doing what you're doing who is affected are only the car owners being affected no probably if you remove some parking the car on, car, the, the vehicle people can go a little faster yes there is less but maybe you can walk from somewhere else so you have to do this information gathering before you table these issues right now in our hurry to get the ward committees done or whatever kind of a representation at a local level done because this the amount of information you gather starts take making more impact when you go to this ward level stuff right now some mla mp is making some decisions you are mm-hmm. not even involved right mp making some foreign policy decision some po- gst policy somewhere else is you are not having the right kind of analytics done mm. for you to represent this is why more and more you need to start getting involved in understanding who is talking about this issue there are biases people will come with their own angles of supporting somebody or not supporting somebody can you read more can you look at the other side and update whatever information you have you will always have some prior information if you are willing to change that information i mean the understanding of that information then you will move ahead mm. if you are hell bent on saying that no other information will change my mind or even influence how i think then is where the problem starts that you will not have solutions people will look for a win and you are always fighting yeah, of course you lose to the vested interests that are there and they will play you yeah. you don't have information they'll play you if you don't want to understand they will play you 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 think you have the all all the answers then also they will play you mm. they'll give you what you think you want and then you will not get it in there is no shortcut to prep work on understanding problems if each one of us can't understand everything 
but it is incumbent on us to understand who has those answers how they are thinking and reach out to them and say is that good enough i think that is where we want to increasingly increase that knowledge base of people who can come and talk and give you that information and i think the uh, people who want this information is also write to people and say can you cover this topic i want to know more mm. that's very important in that engagement ask say i don't have this information who has this mm. who can talk about this we want to listen to it you know, so that's more point. like the kind of podcast that you have i mean you have a lot of domain experts coming and talking about different kind of things uh, different uh, problems that uh, that that affect our uh, city yep and so all of these people come and speak so i think more people should come and watch your uh, podcast in order to understand how the experts uh, look at a problem and how are we looking at a problem so that's the gap that we have i mean as normal citizens who do not understand these intricacies when we watch some of your podcast we understand the years of you know work that these experts have put in for a particular whatever domain that they come from uh, they have a much better understanding of what we have yeah Shame, uh, shameless plug only for my podcast but then no you should watch more no yeah <laughs> we should we should watch more and uh, here's what i understood from the conversation we just had uh, about what information is and how important it is for people to have a little more information before they take sides or decisions or uh, choose an ideology you know and so on and so forth so information is available at large based on what your interest is you go after a certain information you don't just take it from one or two sources that are convenient to you but you also look at the opposite sides of that spectrum of opposite sides of the of that argument to, to be better informed uh, and have more discussions open discussions with people that are stakeholders from the citizen side in order to represent that problem to the government side and then be open to having uh progressions not necessarily wins so in in a public sector in a, in a public uh, in a social good uh, project or or a campaign we don't always win all the time not even politicians win most of the time so you know it's always about small small gains that's what i understand from you but the importance of understanding a problem from experts is at the is the is the minimum that a citizen should invest in i to, think so uh, to learn from people who know better so with that i think uh, we should close this and uh, this session and uh, i think next we should try and think about how or who should support public campaigns social good campaigns and what are the role of corporates and uh, private philanthropy in order to support campaigns and projects and you know, civic action groups like yourself uh um, to bring some good to the city and information itself how do you make yeah, this information worth the while to sit down and spend the effort in disseminating this yeah and that's important to support as well yeah well summarized see you all next week see you all next week thank bye you bye bye